This video is brought to you by the letter O. Next time you need to mask off active areas or control dangling surface states, think oxide. And the letter D. Dope. It's no longer reserved for the folks out in Gresham. If you need to get your carriers moving, think phosphorus, boron, arsenic. So the basic steps I performed is I took a piece of wafer, broke it down into a more convenient size. I already had the thick oxide on it. I opened up by etching holes into it, active areas, and then I put on the spin-on dopants and stuck it into the furnace. Uh, I did most of my doping this weekend with uh, N-type phosphorus, and uh, that was in the furnace anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. And then I would pull it pulled it out and ran it through an etch and removed all the glassy deposit from the dopant. Right. And then for transistors, I etched some holes through the oxides to make um, an area for the gate dielectric. And then I put it back into the furnace and I grew my gate oxides, pulled it out, opened some holes for the source drain and substrate contacts and then epoxied the gates and then all my contacts and put wires onto them. So that's it. And I made some devices that worked. So some of the footage didn't turn out. I'll try to splice this all together so it makes sense. Um, I apologize um, if it doesn't. All right, the oxidation for the thick oxide is done. And I had a couple pieces that turned out really nice with pretty uniform oxide layers on them and very little debris. However, a few pieces ended up having some debris land on them. And I'm going to use these to do some diode tests and make some photovoltaics. All right, here's the dopant. It's phosphorosilicate from emulsitone. It's a very thin liquid. I'm going to put some onto the wafer, which is sitting on the CPU fan. And then I'll turn my power supply on, and it will spread the dopant in a nice, even layer. Okay, it's time to bake the silicon. Let's see if I can get this little door out of the way without landing on top of my wafer piece that's sitting here. So I set the wafer piece on top of the, the furnace so I could drive off all the solvents. Ah, the police are coming. Okay. So the instructions for the emulsitone dopant says let it dwell in the, the opening of the furnace for a bit to drive off any kind of organics. And I can see that it's changing color. I'm going to drive this in. And someone's knocking on my door. This is the characteristic of a forward biased silicon diode. I'll show you my diode that I built, forward and reverse biased. Okay, reverse. All right, here's my test setup. I have a transistor curve tracer, and it has a position for two different transistors. I have a commercial FET in there with the gate hooked up, and the switch, when I toggle that over, will switch over to my FET up here on this sheet of glass that I've got wired up through 
a hundred jumper cables. Down here, since the thresholds are a little funny on my transistor, I have to use an external power supply that I've got configured where I can sweep the gate from a negative voltage to a positive voltage. The device doesn't turn off entirely um, at zero volts, so I have to actually take it a bit below um, the supply rail. So let's take a look at the sweep here. This is a commercial transistor, what you would expect as the source and drain is swept with a, uh, a voltage. You see the transistor turn on and uh, go off into infinity there. All right. Um, I could configure this to show a little bit better example of um, how a curve tracer works with multiple steps in there, but I have it configured so when I flip the switch over, which I'm going to do right now, it goes to my FET. All right, there's my FET. So, up here on the oscilloscope, ooh, that's kind of hard to see. This shows the voltage of the gate that's hooked up. So right now it's at zero volts, and maybe I'll just have to talk you through this since it's kind of difficult to see it's so washed out. And maybe I'll turn the lights off here. Let's see. Is that any better? No. All right. Well, you just have to believe me what's happening up on the scope there. So I'm going to run the gate negative. So I'm running the gate negative, a couple of volts negative up there, and now my transistor is mostly off. All right, now I'm going to swing it positive. So I'm going positive with it. And there goes my transistor. Foomp, turns on. Excellent. It's got some funny characteristics, as you would expect building something with drain cleaner and uh, rust remover and touching it with your fingers and doing it in your kitchen. But we have real transistor action. Isn't that exciting? Um, out of the two that I built here, one of them is just too leaky to be very useful. I might play with it a little bit more and see if I can come up with a way to maybe backside bias it negative enough to get it to work. So looks like I'll be doing another run to try to get another couple transistors working to make my first NAND gate. Alright, just for fun, why don't I just turn this transistor off again. This is just so exciting. Look at that, it's turning off. It's turning off. Alright, I've got my negative supply rail there and that transistor is off. Let's turn that back on. Look how laggy it is. <laughs> Uh, so much contamination, isn't it great? So between source and drain, I have about, let's see what's on this, the transistor checker here. I'm sweeping about, oops, about 8 volts. Okay, here's the second transistor on the same die, same configuration. I just moved the source and drain over and hooked the gate up. Zero volts on the oscilloscope on the top going to the gate. You can see it's very on right here. And if I go negative on the supply rail, I can get it to turn off a little bit. So there's negative five volts turned off some, still drifting down all the contamination moving around through the gate. And let's see if I run this up. Let's run it up to 5 volts positive. See if it turns on more. So in fact, since this one's so leaky, it, it turns on a bit better than the other transistor. Hmm. What to do with a half-on resistor, I mean a transistor. Maybe I'll make an, make this uh, into an inverter and use that just as a pull-up. All right, good progress. Uh, I will continue and I will blog more about it.